Roy Campbell has pursued his vision for nearly 25 years. He has a style that is easily recognized by silhouetted, elongated figures. Self-taught, he is influenced by his birthplace, Monk's Corner, South Carolina. Artistically, he captures the spirit and flavor of African-American life in the South by employing rich multimedia collage techniques, including a mix of vintage clothing, quilted fabrics, burlap, needles, thread, elements of Southern terrain, newspaper, and the skillful use of color. Through his art, he becomes a griot, telling stories of hard work, dignity, love, and care. Stories which are at times haunting and painful, yet hopeful and inspiring. Stories which bring to life folks who are proud, God-fearing, and self-reliant. Campbell's distinctive art has been seen on hit television shows such as The Cosby Show, In the Heat of the Night, and Living Single. His work has also been featured in the film The First Wives Club. His most recent series, the newspaper series, features newsprint as its most dominant feature. In these works, the newspaper serves as a time capsule. Upon close examination, the articles triumphantly detail the palpable, unwavering strength and perseverance of people of African ancestry from slavery to present day. The Mary Lou Williams Center for Black Culture is grateful to have had Mr. Campbell present for the unveiling of five recently acquired pieces from the newspaper series, which will become a part of the center's permanent art collection. wishes that, you know, purchases are well thought out and they're part of a, a plan and, you know, you're going to develop whatever. I walked in, I saw these, I made a few phone calls to other people said, am I crazy? Like, can I really do this? Like, I, you know, and uh, they said, yeah, yeah, do, do this. this. This sounds like the right thing to do. And um, the journey to now um, has just been really wonderful and really fortunate. And so um, as we were cel beginning to celebrate our anniversary, um, this year we said the one thing that we have to do as a part of our 25th anniversary celebration is to unveil the art and do everything we can to bring the artist. And so without further ado, um, I am delighted, thrilled, humbled uh, to introduce to you uh, the artist of our new paintings uh, as well as those that you see around the center, none other than Mr. Lira Campbell. Good afternoon, man. Good afternoon, woman. Anna, thank you for coming, and Anna, thank you for staying. In translation, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming, and thank you for staying. At the start of my artist talks, I always acknowledge the presence of my ancestors, my guardian angels, my mother and father, Dorothy and Joseph Campbell, whom I am so glad have raised me up on cornbread and black eyed peas. <laughs> now, being raised on cornbread and black eyed peas has reminded me of the humble beginnings I came from and to appreciate the many blessings I've received throughout my life and my career. Of course, being here with you to talk about these Five pieces that will be a permanent part of the Mary Lou Williams Center is a blessing and an honor. The series is called the Newspaper Series. It has evolved to be called the Newspaper Series. Two years ago, the people from the Community Folk Arts Center at Syracuse University asked me and Jonathan Jones to do a body of work 
that would bring awareness, have a seat, sir, that would bring awareness to the plight of the Gullah people, South Carolina. Now, most people don't know that Gullahs are African Americans whom from slavery have been able to hold on to their African ways up to this very moment. Right? Some people don't know that their ancestors were enslaved Africans who came from the western part of Africa, Sierra Leone, Senegal, Ghana, Gambia, Angola, maybe a few places. And they were placed on these islands in the low country region of South Carolina and Georgia on the coastal plain. And these African Americans were able to maintain their ways for a number of three ways. They were on a semi-tropical environment, something to their own. They uh, were isolated from the mainland, from outside influences. And mosquitoes. Mosquitoes <laughs> in the summer month pose great problems for the slave holders and the slave owners. They cause disease illness and they were just harassing. If you ever go to Charleston and experience a mosquito, they win. So during the summer months, these slaves would be abandoned. And so they sustained their lives by doing what was natural, calling on their African ways. These pieces are symbolic depictions. Okay? Now, unknowingly, I grew up with some Gullah experiences, right? I was born, raised, bred, butted, spread, sandwich, biscuit, red rice, white rice in Charleston, South Carolina, in the city proper. People call that the, the city country. Now, on the other hand, my mother, she was born and raised 50 miles outside of Charleston, right, in a place called Mutt's Corner, spelled M-R-N-C-K. Right. Now, where we're from, we say that was in the country. But some no, some people say that's the country. But what we call it, we call it the jig. Another dialect, the jig. What is the jig? Well, I'll give you an easy example. The country, the backwoods, and then behind the backwood is the jig. <laughs> All right? That's where my mom and my family are from. So when I, we visit and every time I would visit, I always loved going, staying with my grandfather. I had a lot of aunts and uncles and cousins. I stayed with my grandfather. And I noticed that when I came here, I noticed that he had, just like a uh, peace of mind, this, this environment was pretty much inspired by his environment. But he had newspaper all over the wall and in his shoes, pretty much like this environment. And I had, you know, in my research to find out more information about Gullah people, I learned that he believed that he would be preventing the house and protecting the house from dangerous and evil spirits, particularly one spirit called the hag. And this belief came from the western part of Africa where the Africans would take passages from the, from the, from the, from, from the Quran and put in an amulet for the same purpose. When I read that, it gave me another perspective of my grandfather. He may have not known what he, why, where it came from and why he was doing it, but the information welled up in me. So I just wanted to know more. So I'm an artist. I went through all kinds of research. I went on the internet. I went to Barnes and Noble. I went to the library. And I wanted to cover all the possibility, all the areas that I could learn about Gullah people. So I went into this bookstore called The Shrine of the Black Madonna, right? And I wanted to find out if there were any activist Gullahs, you know, anybody who took some initiatives from that, from that background. And I don't know, like me, I believe that whatever you're looking for is looking for you. You know how when you lose something and then you go looking for it, and you find something else that you had lost that you weren't looking for? Well, that happened to me. In this store, I found a booklet of replicas of African-American historical newspaper. And I opened this newspaper, and it chronicles our assertiveness, our accomplishments, 
our alliances with white abolitionists and Quakers and from the slavery to the civil rights period. Now, I had this vision. Artists, when we get a vision, we can't give it back. Because retrospectively speaking, my earlier works always depict the history and the spirit of African American people. From what I've learned over the years, I've always incorporated these, sil these silhouetted figures before the newspaper always had this history about the, the journey of African American people. So now here it is, these newspapers. I'm, I'm looking for gullet information, but here I found these newspapers, right? That chronicles this timeline, this time capsule. And I say, wow, all these years, finally, I find some information that I could fuse Leroy Campbell's artwork with educational information about our history. This will give me a new direction as an artist, telling the story in fact. So I said, okay, I'm going to start incorporating it. But, beknownst to me, it also allowed me, for me the opportunity to talk about another aspect of fellow culture, the griots, the storytelling.
designed with patterns that had secret coded messages in them to help navigate slave to freedom. And so that's what led to me doing this piece, which is, called, which is entitled Bear Paw, one of the names. North Star and Wagon Wheel, Bow Tie. All of this information came to light as a result of me doing this exhibit. And I wanted to, so I continued to do more research, and I found, I came across this picture. This was taken from an actual photograph. And the woman in the picture is, is, is a nurse, right? Her relative is the head of the Gullah Geechee Nation. Her name is Queen Quet. Queen Quet is fluent in three languages, math, English, and Gullah. She could have made lots of money on Wall Street, but she's dedicated to making certain that she do whatever she can to save what's left of the Gullah culture. So she gave me permission to do this piece. And the thing that made me do this piece, which is entitled Endurance, was the caring, the support of one another, the support of my family when we were going through a hard time, Father Mackey, a white Catholic priest, giving my family food when we needed it, and putting his arms around my father. Mother Rivers, the big bosom woman, making sure that my family stayed close together. And that's one of the strength, that's one of the, the most important aspects of the Gullah people, or people in general. You need some touching and some understanding to help you endure through some of the tough times. And so I wanted to bring her energy and the spirit of her energy in by creating this piece and calling it Endurance. There were so many things that I had not known, like when I spoke of red rice, we used to eat red rice all the time on the weekends, always served with fish. This red rice is a tomato rice, added with chicken and seafood, right, served with fish. Well, this dish came from Senegal, called jollof rice, or debujin. You can go to, to a Senegalese restaurant today and order that same meal. You go to Charleston, and you will get a red rice dish to this very moment. I know, and so, in short, that's, in a nutshell, the inspiration behind these pieces. Now, I know that for art collectors, artwork uh, helps you realize monetary values, and art lovers, you know, it's a personal thing. But what's left of the Gullah culture, you know, deserves some attention. And this is the reason why these pieces were done initially. So I hope that you will take an opportunity, meaning you go to Charleston, right? And when you go to Charleston, go to the marketplace, like between Meeting Street and Calhoun Street. And when you go to the marketplace, you'll see all kinds of vendors selling all kinds of things. But you'll also see African Americans, gullets, selling these baskets that they have weaved from the marshland grass called sweet grass. Same technique to weave those baskets came out of Sierra Leone. And also across the Cooper River Bridge over in Mount Pleasant, you might see some of the gullahs with their shanty stalls with all these baskets, very artsy, very one-of-a-kind detailed pieces of work, you see. I hope that um, you will take in the richness and the, and the culture of Gullah. Also, go to the gallery. Gallery Chuma, he has uh, focused on artists of Gullah descent, like Jonathan Green, myself, Charles Dessasur, and John Jones. And, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes my inspirational talk behind these pieces. And I hope that you have enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, I am open. Thank you.